If you want to use table diffusion inside your own application, the most preferred way would be to use it as an API. For example, you would host or you would use a stable diffusion API service and then you would call that API from your application and then it would give you a response. But if you do not want to use any third party hosting service and you want to use your own server, like you want to host the API by yourself, this video tutorial is going to tell you the easiest way, probably the easiest way to create a stable diffusion API. And I'm going to call this video stable diffusion as a service API. That's what, like, that's what I'm calling it. You can call it whatever you want, but if you want to provide stable diffusion as a service for yourself or for somebody else, this video is going to teach you one of the easiest way to do that. For that, we are going to use the library called Diffusers. We have already covered Diffusers on this channel. It's a library from Abhishek Thakur where you have got a very simple UI to do certain things like text to image, image to image, in painting and a lot more things. So now we are going to focus on Diffusers just from the API aspect. So the first thing that you need to do is you open a Google Collab notebook if you want to write it on Google Collab or if you have got a GPU, then you can do it on your GPU. If you're on Google Collab, just make sure that you click runtime, select change runtime that will help you select hardware accelerator, which is GPU. You need GPU for this. The next step is for you to install diffusers library. Just remember that this is not F U S E it's U Z E. So diffusers is the right pronunciation. I'm not an, I'm not a native English speaker. So if I make a mistake, please forgive me. So pip install diffusers, I'm installing it in the quiet mode and it installs all the required dependencies. Once the installation is successful, for you to check if the installation is successful, you can use diffusers, the command line. So the reason why we are using this, this bang exclamation symbol is that we are running this as a command line command, CLI, command line interface. So that's why we are calling it like that. So bang in diffusers space API, space dash dash help. This is going to run. If it runs, then you know that you have successfully installed diffusers and it also is going to give you the help. Like for example, what are the arguments that you can pass? You can say, where do you want to store the output? You can say, which port you want to run this? You can say, where do you want to host this? What is the device that you are using? Like for example, is it CUDA? Is it MPS? Is it um, just the CPU number of workers that you want to run? So that gives you the help about how do you run the diffusers API. Now, before you can invoke the API, you need to set two important environment variables. The first environment variable is x2 img underscore model. Depending upon the interface you're using, if you are on Google Collab, you can use percentage env to set an environment variable. But if you are on a different machine, like for example, Mac, then you can use something like this. You can say export and you can set the environment variable. So depending upon the computer you are on, so just make sure that you need to set environmental environment variables. So we, are, we have to set two environment variables. One is x2, G, x2 img underscore model. The second environment variable that you have to set is device. So the first one is going to collect the model. So this is where you specify what is that model that you want to download from Hugging Face Model Hub. And once you specify this model, when the API is invoked, this model gets downloaded from Hugging Face Model Hub. This means you can also load custom models, fine tuned models, like let's say analog diffusion, protogen if it is available on hugging face model so you can use any hugging face model diffusers compatible model from hugging face model hub if you specify this here this is the first environment variable the second environment variable is you have to specify the device whether it is CUDA whether it is MPS which is for Apple M1 silicon chip or whether it is CPU like depending upon the computer that you have got so once you have set these two environment variables then you are good to proceed if you're going to do text to image or if you are going to do image to image, if you're going to do in painting, you have to set another environment variable that you can find in the diffusers GitHub repository. Now, after you have successfully set this up, the next thing is you can just right away start running diffusers API. You have to say diffusers API and give the port in which you want to run. If you are like me, you don't have your own GPU, you are running this on Google Collab, then you need to find a way to tunnel this. You can use ngrok if you want, but if you do not want to use ngrok, that service that I prefer is local channel. It's completely free. 
It's part of an NPM package that comes installed with Google Colab Notebooks. So all you have to do is you have to run Diffusers API port dash dash port 10,000 and then tunnel that into internet. So with using this and operator and then say NPX local channel port port 10,000. So which means first time when you run this thing, it's going to run this diffusers API locally on the Google Colab machine that you have got. And next from that particular port 10,000, you're going to tunnel this into a link that is accessible on the internet. And this is the URL where this is accessible for you. And as you can see, it has successfully captured the text to image model. Just make sure that it has done it. Otherwise you might face an error when you invoke the API and make your first API call. It wouldn't show you an error when you have the API invoked, but it would show you an error when you have the API call being made. And as you can see from this interface, like at least like when you see the Swagger UI, this is primarily supported by fast API. So kudos to fast API as well and as well like the diffusers. Once you run this, it's going to start the server process and you're going to get this URL. And along with this URL, it's going to download a bunch of models that primarily is related to the model that you have given, which in this case is Stability AI Stable Diffusion 2.1. So now we are creating an API or we are offering Stable Diffusion as a service for Stable Diffusion 2.1 model. And this can be used by anyone on the internet. Right now, this is just a proof of concept. When I shut down this Google Colab machine or when I finish this video, you would not be able to access it. But let's say you have got your own GPU or you have got AWS access, then if, instead of using a third party service like Replicate, you can deploy your own Stable Diffusion instance and create an API and start using it in your application. So that way, you know, you can save costs, do a lot of things. So I'm going to click this link. Once I click this link, this link is going to take me to a page where it is just going to say hello world. This means our API is working fine, but you can just no wonder that where is it? So the way you can access the API first documentation is you can give the port and then say docs, but because we have already specified the port, I'm going to just say docs. But to say docs and that is going to get me to the Swagger UI. If you're if you're familiar with the API world, you must know that this is a very popular UI. This is a place where you can see the documentation, what kind of request body you have to send, and you can also try it out live. So this is the type of request body you have to send. And what are the parameters here? You need to send a prompt, you need to send negative prompt, you can send the scheduler, what kind of scheduler, the image height, image weight, number of images that you want, and the guidance scale and number of steps and seed value. You must be already familiar with these parameters if you're familiar with Stable Diffusion World. Otherwise, I would recommend you to watch my other Stable Diffusion tutorials. Now, as you have reached the Swagger UI, let's try out the UI. So I'm going to click this try, out, try it out button. And here I can edit the prompt. So I can say um, Kung Fu Panda slurping noodles fighting enemies, uh, Kung Fu style, and what else? Uh, training on art station, realistic photo, digital art, and I can set a seed value that is one, two, three, four, five, six, 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 six. Um, I'm okay with this guidance scale. Number of steps looks a little too much for me. I'm okay with number of steps 30. And uh, I'm okay with this scheduler and I'm going to click execute. Once I click execute this API endpoint, you can see this API endpoint slash text to image from this URL slash text to image is called with this request body. So if you are going to use this, like for example, you are building a React application, you're building an Android application or iOS application, whatever you're doing it, this is how you would ideally make the call after deploying the application. This is the endpoint, this is the request body, and then it's going to take about like 20 to 30 seconds on Google Colab, depending upon the kind of mission that you have got. So after it takes that particular amount of time, you would ultimately see the result here. So if you have got a successful response, you would get response code 200. But if you have different kind of error, you can see other errors. While the response is being made, you can also see that we can do image to image, we can also do in painting. But if you have to do in painting, you have to use a different API, uh, you have to use a different model. Now the response 
is successful that's why we have got 200 as a code and we have got the image but to your surprise it's not actually an image it is something called a base 64 encoding so i'm going to copy this i'm going to copy this entire thing i'm going to go to a nice website that actually does base 64 encoding for me so instead of converting it using program i'm going to paste the code here the base 64 string encoded so we are going to decode it so i'm going to put it here and remove the quotes which is not supposed to be part of it and then you can see that we have got a kung fu panda i don't know if it is slurping noodles here it looks like it's slurping the chopstick but this is this is the image that we have got so now i want to show you that it doesn't not it does not work only on google collab but it can also work on um, any external machine like if you have got like an app or somewhere. So I'm going to show you a demo of how you can use it. Like for example, I'm going to copy this entire curl. Okay, curl command. I'm going to go to a website called Hopscotch. I'm going to go to a website called Hopscotch. Click here, import curl, and I'm going to click import curl. And I can give a different prompt here. So I can say a beautiful portrait of a young Chinese girl, studio, lighting, close up shot. Um, and then in the negative prompts, I can say 3D, car, comma, cartoonish, comma, blender. I think this is good blender. And I'm going to stick to the same and I'm going to send the call. So once I make the call, once I make the request, this is a post request. It's going to take at least 30 to 40 seconds. Again, once again, it depends upon the parameters with which you set number of images, number of steps, guidance scale, all these things matter a lot. Um, and we have got it quick. So now you have got the image. I'm going to copy this. Again, go back to the service to decode the image. I'm going to delete this, paste the new one, remove the code here and go to the top. And once again, remove the code. And you can see that we have got a really beautiful young Chinese woman, a Chinese girl. And um, this is created using the diffusers API, which is a stable diffusion API that we ourselves have deployed on Google Collab. So that is uh, one of the easiest way how you can deploy stable diffusion or how you can offer stable diffusion as a service and make API calls for your own application. Give a start to the diffusers repository. Kudos to the developer Abhishek Thakur. If you have got any question, let me know in the comment section. Otherwise, this Google Collab notebook will be linked in the YouTube description. You can check it out. Thank you so much. See you in the next video. Happy prompting.